Is your learner a great reader but really struggles in spelling? In this case, your reader is great at memorizing the words right as they see it. Or they might be really good at recognizing context clues within the sentence or using the pictures to help them figure out that unknown word. Great readers with poor spelling really benefit from a systematic and explicit approach to teaching spelling. And so in this video, I'm going to cover the strategies and the steps that I take in order to help these struggling spellers. The first steps that I take with all my learners is to see if there are any gaps in their skills. You can't teach a new skill if the foundations of it are lacking. And so a pre-assessment like this core phonics survey, which I'll link down below, I actually use this resource as part of a screening that I do with my new tutoring students. It's a free 30 minute assessment. It's a great time for the tutor and the learner to kind of see if they fit well together and also to check to see if there are any learning gaps. If you're interested in the free assessment, I'll link it down below. In this assessment, it covers letter names, uppercase and lowercase, letter sounds, long vowels, short vowels. Then it gets into reading and decoding skills. This is what the teacher would have to look over. Descriptions on how to give assessments. Let me just show you what your learner would be seeing. Typically, I actually turn these into a game I put them on a fun game online interactive that we can play but if you prefer that you want to do just give a basic assessment like this what I would suggest is to put some type of cover sheet down so that the learner can focus on each letter a lot of times learners will look at this word that they've seen multiple times over and they can just read it by sight because they can remember what the word actually looks like. However, if you were to look at a nonsense word, they would really have to rely on their decoding skills in order to read that word. So don't ever skip nonsense words. They are just as important. With it being four pages, it can seem like a lot. So I would just gauge your learner and see whether or not you can tell that they're getting tired towards the end. If it's taking way too long, then I would uh, stop and take breaks. If they are, for example, really struggling with part um, E, for example, and they're making maybe three or four or five mistakes, I would not go past that part because if they're struggling with part E, CVC words, they're, they're probably going to struggle with part F and part G where it gets into more complex words and we don't want our learners to go through that. Did you find that pre-assessment helpful? If so, make sure you check the link down below so you can get a copy of it. It is made by Core Phonics Surveys and I would really love it if you could give us a like so that this video could be spread to more people that would benefit from it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So say for example I did this us did this assessment with one of my learners and this is what they came up with this is um, the results they do need some help with long and short vowel sounds just a little bit maybe a little bit of just a review and then you can see down here in the reading and decoding skills they didn't get past the R controlled vowels I stopped there because they had over um, five mistakes in that case, now that I know what they are struggling with, now that I know what the gaps are in their phonics, then I would go straight to making a lesson. A review on vowel sounds, which I saw that my learner needed support in. And what I have is this phoneme segmentation and sound boxes. And this download can be found in the description below. It's free. So what I do is I have these little uh, fake coins here. You can use counters, you can use blocks, cars, whatever you want to use. And we're gonna just tap out and identify each sound in the word map, for example. So I'm gonna have them stretch the sound, map, then tap each sound, m, a, p, okay? 
In another lesson, I can be using these sound boxes. And so basically, we would use this the same way. So say for example, we are going to practice uh, the R controlled vowel sounds. So I, R, U, R, E, R, for example. Let's say for example, we're using we're practicing the IR sound. And what I would have them do is I would give them a word and have them tap out the sounds. So for example, let's say I have give them the word bird. I could have them tap it out with their fingers, b er d. Or I could have them use their coins again, touch each sound basically. Bird, b er d. Then I can have them use these blocks, these letter blocks here, to make bird, b, er, d. And what's cool about these uh, blocks is they can come together and connect together and they can blend it. Bird. After they're comfortable making the word, then they can write the word, b, er, d. And after a while of doing this type of phonemic awareness and phonics skill, then eventually they won't even need to make the word. They can just write the word isolated and then together. The next strategy that I like to teach my learners is called syllable division. And syllable division is especially helpful for those learners that are tackling more complex multi-syllabic words. I actually have a video that covers how to use syllable division and reading and that would be very beneficial to check that out if you're not familiar with syllable division. But I'm going to just give you a quick recap. So for example, I have the word, these two words here. In order for the learner to find out if it's a closed or open syllable, they first need to look at if there is a consonant after the vowel. So I have the learner identify the vowel and then after the vowel to see if there is a consonant. And in this word, there is a consonant. And so it is closed and I like to have the learners picture a door right here that closes that vowel in. And because it's a closed syllable, that vowel says it's short sound. We would read this as hid, hid. Now in this word, this vowel does not have a consonant after it, and therefore it is an open syllable, and it says the long sound, hi. So this is closed and this is an open syllable. And again, the learners need to really have a good grasp on identifying open and closed in order to use syllable division in spelling. Okay, let's try the word locate. Clap out the syllables, locate. Low, and that's a long, vowel sound because it's an opal, open syllable, Kate, K -A -T. and we need to make this A say the long sound, we need an E at the end, low Kate. This is a lesson that I've done with one of my online tutoring students, and the first thing that we do in morphology is we talk about the definition of a prefix, for example. And we talk about how it's part of the word that comes before the base word that changes its meaning. So this is the base word, caution, and this is the prefix, pre. And I ask my learner, where can you find the prefix? It is right here. It comes before the base word, and it changes the meaning. Now you're going to notice that part of this spelling activity is really also a part vocabulary is also part vocabulary um, is also part a vocabulary lesson. They somewhat go hand in hand when you're talking about morphology. So then the next thing we talk about is pre, as in the suffix pre in particular and its definition, and then. I have the learner look through this list of words and I have them highlight where they find that 
prefix and they highlight where it is going all the way down. And once they've highlighted all of the prefixes, and then we can move on to reading the word. So prevent, preview. And here they're able to see the chunks of the word, which is really important. That really helps them with kind of seeing the word in chunks as opposed to one whole word they need to memorize. So once my learner has highlighted all of the prefixes and we've talked about each one, then we go on to trying to spell these prefixes. And I have some sound boxes here. You can find some other ones. Again, there's similar ones in the link in the description. So say, for example, we are to spell out pretest. And for this one, I would want them to clap out this prefix, say here, and then the root word. So pretest. Oh, and notice how that E says E because it's an open syllable. Pre. So using these boxes to help identify the prefix and then the base word for each of the words really helps them break apart the word as opposed to having to memorize the whole word. So which skill do you think your child would benefit from? And really it all depends on their skills. If they are just beginning spellers, I would suggest phoneme mapping. If they are working on multisyllabic words, I would suggest syllable division or morphology as strategies for tackling spelling words. And I'd love to hear from you what strategy you would want to teach your learner. Comment down below. If you are looking to, for more phony mapping activities, check out this video right here. And if you are looking into teaching your learners about syllable division, again, make sure you check out this video right here, open and close syllables. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.